Good morning, it's Rebecca here with NLC Live, and I'm just excited to be reading the Word of God with you guys this morning. So we're just not gonna waste any time. We're gonna jump right into it. We are in the Old Testament in 1 Chronicles chapter 16, and here is verse 29. Praise the Lord's glorious name. Bring an offering and come into his temple. Bow down before the Holy One when he appears. I love this verse. All you have to do is go back to the beginning of the chapter to see what's going on. And it is David who has just been made king in the nation of Israel. And one of his first acts of, as king, he goes and gets the Ark of the Covenant. This was just a box that represented the promises that God had made to the nation of Israel. But what David knew is that wherever that was, wherever those promises were, that's where the presence of God was. And he, he knew he did not want to do one act as king before the presence of God was right in the middle of that nation. So he went and got the Ark of the Covenant, and when he was bringing it back into his nation, he appointed these guys to be worship leaders. He trained them what it meant to thank the Lord and worship the Lord and praise Him for the glory of His name. And this nation had always been good at seeking God, and they knew what it was like to bring a sacrifice and to ask God to forgive their sins, but they didn't know what it meant to worship and praise his name. And so David knew all about this. All the way back in his teenage years when he was just sitting in fields with a bunch of sheep, caring for them day in and day out, he started to write songs to the Lord, to give the Lord thanks, to worship him in every season, in seasons where it was easy, in seasons where he was struggling, in seasons where he just wanted to celebrate. He trained himself to be a worshiper of God. And so David, once he was made king, he trained his entire nation how to worship the Lord. He wrote this long song, and one of the verses is the verse that we read today. Praise the Lord's glorious name. Bring an offering and come into his temple. Bow down before the Holy One when he appears. So when we look at our questions, I'm just going to answer three of them today. Is there a command to obey? Yes, this entire verse is a command to worship and praise the Lord. The first one, it's three forms of worship. It says, praise the Lord's glorious name. And when I looked up that word praise, it simply means to celebrate the Lord with hands extended. It's talking about this spirit of worship and celebration where you're so excited, you're jumping up and down, you cannot believe what God has done for you. And it says, praise the Lord's glorious name. And I started to think, God, what part of your name have you made glorious in my life these days? What aspect of your character am I celebrating right now? And honestly, I've been asking God to give us uh, just some wisdom on my son right now. He's six months old. He's struggling with eczema all over his body. It, it shows up in the form of red patches on his skin. He's itching like crazy. And I've just been asking God to show us what is the healing that he has for him? What is the wisdom he has for us? And God has been giving us wisdom. He's been bringing solution. So right now I am praising God that he is our healer. I think the word in the Old Testament is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. I've been praising him as our healer. So what is the aspect of God's character that you can glorify him for today in your life? And then the second command, bring an offering and come into his temple. I love that when we bring our offerings before the Lord, God considers that an act of worship. When we show up in his presence, not empty handed, but when we're bringing something before him. And sometimes it's, our, it's literally our tithes and offerings, our finances we're bringing before him. Sometimes he's asking us to bring our heart, to bring our whole selves. In other words, when we get into his presence, to not allow ourselves to stay distracted and focused on other, th other things, but to just offer our hearts in sincerity before him and say, God, I am here for you this morning. I'm here for all that you have. I set aside everything else and I focus my heart and my attention upon you and then the third command to obey bow down before the Holy One when he appears that word in other translations is actually the word worship the word worship means to bow down to lower ourselves to recognize that as we decrease ourselves he is increasing as we lower ourselves he is getting higher he is getting greater and I just have to share a cool story with you Last week when we were at GLR, that campus, and we were getting ready for worship, we were on the stage rehearsing, and it just became obvious to our team at a certain point in that rehearsal that the presence of the Lord just moved into the room. And I can't explain it except when we were getting ready for a certain song, all of a sudden it was like I couldn't even sing. 
I just sat down on the floor. I put my hands out and tears began to come down my face because the presence of God was so real in that room. And I looked down the line. My sister Heather was doing the same thing. Two people down from her, Wesley was doing the same thing. And it was obvious that the presence of the Lord had shown up. And all that we could do was just kneel before him in a posture of honor and allow him to be great as we sang these words, worthy is your name, Jesus. And I begin to think of all that the name of Jesus has meant in my life. I begin to ask God that he would just write his name anew on my heart, that he would write the name of Jesus on the walls of our church, over the hearts and the lives of every person coming through our doors. And I just begin to get this sense of excitement and expectancy that God wants to do new things in our midst that he is not finished with what he's been doing in our lives. He's only getting started. So when it says bow down before the Holy One when he appears, I just encourage you when you sense the presence of God to just get in a posture of humility before him and allow him to be great in your lives. Is there a sin to avoid? The sin that I would avoid is just not worshiping God, not stopping and taking time to honor his name. And is there a promise we can claim? The Bible says that he inhabits or he dwells in the praises of his people. So the moment we start to make him great in our lives, he shows up and gets near to us. That's all I have today. I wanna to pray for us. Father, I thank you that you are real. You are with each one of us. I thank you, Lord God, that you're just getting started. You have great things ahead for us. So I pray, Lord God, that you renew our hearts to worship you and praise you every day in our lives for the big things and for the little things. It's in your name we pray. Amen.